Hi uh, guys, this is Tekken 57. This is the second X-ray video tutorial, and the purpose of this tutorial is going to be on how to inject and to create a wrestler part, which you can use for your mods. So you might be wondering why would you need to use create a wrestler part, whereas in tutorial one I showed you how to extract an object from one model to another. Well, as you can recall, the problem is that you can only inject objects which have less vertices than the model allows. So by using create a wrestler part, you're able to overcome this limitation. So for this tutorial, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be showing you how to extract the jacket object from the DDP model and inject it into a create a wrestler part so that you can use this jacket object on any other wrestler model you wish to use it on. Alright, now I've already opened up DDP in X-Ray. So as normal, we need to try and find the jacket object. Alright, as you can see, it is object 5, and it has 1,207 vertices. Now, as with tutorial number 1, you need to try and find a crater as a part, which has more vertices than this, so that you can use the inject smaller functionality inject the jacket into. Uh, <clears throat> you also need to keep something else in mind which is very important. If you are using a crater wrestler part, you should use a crater wrestler part which is more or less in the same location in terms of the placement of the object. So to give you an example, if you are injecting a jacket, you would need to use a shirt or a coat or a robe or something to that effect. Uh, reason for this is because uh, the bone mappings of the object control how the object moves and where the object is placed. And if you are using a crater wrestler part, which has the same kind of placement, uh, you find that the object moves correctly and it doesn't get corrupted when you do any port. Alright, so this is now where some work comes into play where you need to try and find a crater wrestler part which has more vertices than 1207 and is also more or less the same type of object. Uh, I've already done this to save time for the tutorial. So for this uh, tutorial, I'm going to be using the Undertaker's entrance rope. Alright, so let's open up the Create Wrestler part. Okay, I've just named it Undertaker rope just for my reference, but the file is actually called create one dot y o b j. Alright, now that we've opened it up, you can see that there are 1,587 vertices. So this makes it an ideal object in which to inject your jacket object into. Alright, so now that we've identified this, let's open up uh, DDP's jacket, uh, sorry, DDP's uh, model again. And we need to extract uh, object 5. As I've done this already. Uh, when you click the extract, it's the same as tutorial 1, you'll get two files. The object information and the error information. Alright, so now we need to open up the creator rest of part which is the Undertaker row, and now we need to use the inject smaller functionality to inject a uh, DDP jacket into this. So I'm going to click on inject smaller and object 5 that has information which I extracted from DDP's model. Alright, so as you can see DDP's jacket object has now been loaded into Undertaker's row, create the wrestler part. Now, there are a couple of other things that you need to do before you can use this crater wrestler part. The first thing is that uh, the crater wrestler parts have a different type of skeleton than the uh, normal wrestler models. What this means is that the movement of the crater wrestler part will be different from that of the wrestler. So you find that it floats slightly off uh, when the wrestler is moving. So what we need to do is we need to, uh, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, we need to replace the skeleton of the crater wrestler part with the skeleton of the wrestler in which you're trying to inject the, the model into. Alright, so I'm going to click on Utilities, Extract extract Skeleton, and we're going to select DDP as a model. Alright, the skeleton has been extracted, and now we want to inject that same skeleton into the crater wrestler part which we just edited. So I'm going to say Inject Skeleton, select the Undertaker rope, and then select the skeleton file. 
All right, so by doing this, you find that the correct rest of the part will move in sync with your rest of the model. And one last thing that you need to do before you can use the correct rest of the part is that you need to, uh, excuse me, <coughs> sorry, I have a bit of a flu, still, so my voice is giving out on me. Um, you need to fix the texture mapping uh, in the correct rest of the part uh, so that it references your color and normal mask for the ES files. All right, so in order to do this, you need to open this uh, file in a hex editor. Whichever hex editor you prefer, doesn't matter. All right, you just scroll to the very end of the file. All right, you will see the texture references here listed as all one, all zero, all one, underscore n, etc. All right, so you need to change it as follows. Color. Normal mask. Uh, normal mask. All right. Save the file with your hex editor, and that's it. Now, obviously, the UV mappings of the created wrestler part will be incorrect, so you need to edit the uh, the UVs in 3D Studio Max and extract, uh, extract and inject uh, objects as normal. Alright, so that's it, we're done with that. So in order for you to use this Creative Wrestler part in your Wrestler package file, you can either inject this into uh, the hair slot, which is a 2710 slot, uh, just to test it in game, or you can inject it into the, uh, the eyebrow slot, but the eyebrow slot needs to be renamed for it to display correctly, or the object will be transparent. Or option number three is that you could try and find another package file which has more than one Y, y object file uh, in it. A good uh, file to use would be uh, the rocks package file because he has two additional Y object files for his elbow pads and these can be replaced. All right, so that's about it. Now the, the only other thing you need to consider is that the game has a vert C limit. So uh, once the uh, models, the total number of vertices for all the models that you are using reaches a certain limit, the game won't load the model. So you will need to try and experiment a bit to try and find uh, a wrestler object, a hair object, and a creative wrestler part, which does not have too many vertices so that the game can load it. Alright, so one other thing I want to show you guys is how to work with uh, pants objects from the creative wrestler part. Uh, there is a slightly different procedure in order to apply this, and I'm going to show you why now. Alright, so firstly, let's open the pants object in 3D Studio Max so I can demonstrate what, what the issue is. So I'm going to say file import, and I have a pants object which I've selected. Alright, now if you look at the, the way the, the bones appear uh, with the pants object, and the position in which the pants object appears, you notice that it is in what we call a uh, T position. It's, it makes a T. Uh, you can see that the legs are straight and the arms are going across like this. Now the problem is that with the wrestler bones, you find that the uh, the bones are in what we call A pose, meaning that the, the legs are angled outwards like that. So in order to fix uh, this problem, firstly we're going to replace the skeleton in the pants object and then thereafter you need to align, align the legs of the pants to move with the bones. So I'm going to show you how to do this now. Alright, first thing you would need to do is uh, extract your skeleton from your wrestler Y object file and inject this into the pants object. Now I've already done this uh, with DDP skeleton for Undertaker's rope. So I'm just going to I'm gonna skip the extract skeleton part I'm going to go straight into the inject skeleton. Alright, so we're going to select inject skeleton I'm going to select the pants object and then there after the skeleton file in which you want to inject this into. Alright, so we've replaced the skeleton. Now if I open up the same pants object again in 3D Studio Max, you'll see the difference with the bones. Alright, if you look at the bones now, you'll find that uh, the, the bones are now in A pose. You can see the 
uh, the bones of the legs are pointing outwards rather right, than being together. Now, if you if you leave your pants always like this, you find that the legs won't move with the bones because they're not uh, close to the bones. So what we need to do is just uh, quickly shape the pants to uh, to match the shape of the bone. Uh, I'm just going to do this quickly. I'm not going to do it very neatly, uh, just so you guys get the idea. Right, I'm just going to angle the pants a bit and move it in the same place as the bone. I selected a couple of extra vertices here. You shouldn't be doing that. I'm just doing this often just for you guys to get the idea. Same thing with the other. All right, and then the loose words and stuff you guys can fix. Uh, all right, I'm going to leave this part so you guys get the idea. All right, export this. Um, I'm going to call this project zero pants. All right, now open up the pants object as normal. And then import the edit uh, pants object that we've just done in PDC Studio Mac, which is object zero underscore pants. <laughs> Alright, that's it. It's not exactly very neat around these areas, but, but you get the idea. Alright, also you would need to uh, change the texture assignments at the end of the file as I did with the Undertaker rope file. And then this file will be ready to use in game. Alright, so that's, that's about it for this tutorial. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any questions, please post it on the thread on SPAC Talks. And uh, I'll be, I will be doing one more tutorial. Uh, which is going to be focusing on converting parts from older uh, models such as 2010 and 2011 models and how to use these in uh, the newer model format. Hope you guys enjoy. Uh, take care and stay tuned.